All right. Welcome, 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 everyone. We have got such a great group in the house today. I think we're letting everybody in from the weight room. Hey, everyone. Ian, don't you love it when people are on time? I love it. There's more than people on just 56 people right on the dot, which is pretty good out of like 130 registrations. So I'm, I'm impressed. What's up everyone. We can get you guys on camera too. So we can see your lovely faces. That's always yes. even better. 100%. Yeah. 100%. We are super excited. We're going to, in a moment, just take a quick minute to introduce ourselves, but I would love as you're coming in, if you could share in the chat, we want this to be like super interactive Ian and I, we both love to talk and we would talk the whole time, but we also really just want to talk with you and connect with you today. So what is, I'd love to hear what's your biggest sales related goal for 2023. And then what is the number one challenge you feel like you're currently facing in that area? Cause we really want to gear a lot of the conversation today towards that and towards you and what's coming up. So I'm going to pull up the chat and, uh, and just take that, take a look at that while we go. And while everyone is typing in the chat, do you want to take, I know we've got some of your audience here. We've got some of mine. Do you want to take a brief moment and introduce yourself and, uh, and say who you are? And Sure. Um, Ian Koniak, uh, I run a coaching business. I know some faces here, so it's good to see a lot of you guys. Hey, Julian, what's up, Isaac, Luke. Um, and I help people master the mindset, habits, and skills needed to succeed in sales and in life. So that's me. I love it. I love it. Um, and if I have not met you yet, my name is Elise. I am the founder of a company called She Sells. And I feel like, Ian, you and I are both so aligned in what we want to teach and, and how we help people. So I help women scale um, from six to seven figures, like help them to get to their first six figures and then multi six and seven figures beyond that. But learning and mastering sales in a way that is really aligned for them as women. And again, it's a lot of the inner game. Um, like Ian is a real pro at teaching and I am, I'm excited for the conversation today. So Ian, what are you seeing in the chat that people's goals are? Let's see what people are here for today. I see a lot of, um, achievement related goals. So Megan says president's club, um, Jonathan, bring in 10 new logos, uh, Michael, similar shift from current customers to new logos, Julian to get to 300% of plan income, uh, John 150. I see a lot of goals specific to, uh, to targets, um, to targets in terms of percentage of quota is what I'm seeing here and, and just learning to sell. So a lot of sales related goals yeah. as well. And Dan, I see you. Dan is in the house, a day-to-day -day cadence that brings success at work and personal happiness. I'm a fan of goals like that. I, I like go Greg Kahn's goal, developing a mindset of abundance. Ooh, <laughs> I think we're going to talk about that today. I That's think awesome. I think so too, That's for awesome. sure. And, so I'll, and I'll tell you, like for everyone here, your mindset does determine your results, your mindset and your habits. I, I coach, I have over a hundred people in my program and the people that I work with that get the biggest um, impact, the quickest, the ones that change their mindset um, about what's possible, you know, and, and, and start believing in themselves and also change their habits. So the, the goal of hitting 150 or 300% is enabled through shifting and becoming the person that's capable of doing that through how you think and how you work. So that's a lot of what we're going to focus on today. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that's, so I think let's dive in and we just, you know, right off the bat, like we're, we don't have anything to sell here. We wanted to come together and connect and just try to give back towards the end of the year, um, mm -hmm. help all just set all of you up for success for 2023. So, you know, I think to kick us off, you know, Ian, like you mentioned, you've got a hundred plus account execs in your program right now. And I know you're seeing a lot in terms of what's going on in the market, what's going on in the field. Um, share a little bit of what you're seeing from the work you're doing with your clients just to kick us off. Yeah, I get texts and I get calls every single day, kind of like Ian, talk me off a ledge. And that's kind of the theme of what I'm seeing right now in, in some places. Um, I'll, I'll just give you the high, high level trends that are happening in sales. Um, the first one is that quota attainment's down. And this is not my trends. This is data coming from, um, you know, all over. And, and I've seen it too. 
uh, it, it's, it used to be around high 40, high 40% 40 of people. So 47, 48 ish um, percent of reps are hitting quota. Now it's dropped nearly 10%. So low 40s, high 30s. So that's a significant drop in quota attainment. And that data came from RepView, right? Across all orgs. If you, if you don't know RepView, I highly encourage you to check it out because it's it's what's happening in every company as told by sales reps. Um, so that's the first trend is it's harder. It's harder to hit quota. And that's really being driven by customer. Um, customers are getting tighter, right? In terms of um, there's a lot more scrutiny about spend. There's a lot more oversight of, of projects. And um, I think things are just harder with, with layoffs going on and with um, just a, a stalling of growth. Companies have moved more, instead of tr trying to grow more, they're moving towards improving profitability or improving efficiency in their organizations, which means cuts, layoffs, and ultimately doing more with less. And so that's the big uh, trends that I see. And because people are hitting uh, quota a little less, and because there are layoffs going on, there's a lot more fear in in the sales world. And I see a lot of people that are operating from a place of of fear of their job. There's a lot of managers that are really feeling the pressure and just passing that right down to their teams. And that results in micromanaging. It results mm -hmm. in a lot of like kind of like intimidation. Like if you don't do this, you're going to be put on a plan. I had someone reach out yesterday saying their manager threatened to put them on a plan and they were number two on their team. So wow. this is something that unfortunately it's not unique to one or two companies. I'm seeing it across the board. And that's why Elise and I wanted to do this session because it's very easy to let that dominate that, that track of fear and uncertainty and in doubt take over. And, um, and th that, that has led to an increase in mental health challenges for salespeople. And, and the last piece of data I'll share is that um, last year in 2021, the, the Mental Sales Alliance said that 58% of the, the people surveyed, they surveyed thousands of sales reps, 58% would rate their mental health as fair or poor. In mm. this year, the survey results just came out a few weeks ago. It's gone up to 63%. So the, the mental health I, I wouldn't say crisis, but certainly sales reps aren't thrilled and they're not exactly in a great space right now. And that's continuing to, to get worse. So those are the top trends that I've seen across the industry, yeah. at least. Gosh, thank you so much for sharing that. And I, I want to open it up too, just for any of you who, you know, want to share in terms of mindset, like, is there something coming up for you specifically? We're going to segment into talking about mindset shortly. I know I saw in the chat about, um, abundance mindset and personal happiness. And I'll just, I'll share so candidly, like my personal journey, I was in corporate for quite a while before launching my own company and on the outside looked like I was doing well, but on the inside I had so much anxiety. I was having panic attacks. I had an eating disorder and it's like, I'm not saying you have to like share all of that. <laughs> I feel like that is going on for you, but I just want to let you know, like you're not alone and we want to really, um, we're going to share today some of what shifted my own experience to help create a lot of personal happiness and peace while also making more money. Ian, I know you, you know, you obviously share your story and your journey with your clients too, but we just really want this to be a place that's like supportive. And so whatever your biggest mindset challenges are right now, I think as we go into this segment, we want to open up for you to share in the chat. And I think we'll, Ian, will we open up to for people to ask questions, maybe get some coaching. Yeah, we, we can't, we can kind of take questions as we go. We'll, we'll provide some tips along the way for mindset and for habits for, um, for success, regardless of what's happening around you. But before we do, I'd, I'd love to just ask the group, you know, reply. Yes. If those trends resonate in your mm -hmm. company or how you're feeling or no, if they don't, I mean, that's what I'm hearing from my clients. It doesn't mean it's everything, but those are kind of the high level. I see a lot of yeses. Okay. So yes. to, to, to that point, you're not alone. And I think that's important to know is like in a, in a community, Lisa and I are both through and through salespeople and we, we, that's how we identify. And that's why we're here. This is uh, important to know that what you're going through and what you're thinking, you're not crazy and that it's, it's really common across multiple companies. Cause I see it and, and Elise does too. So that's, that's why this is topic is very important because it's really about how do you get through the little voices in your head or the, the doubts and not let this these trends or these these negative things going on impact how you work and how you serve your clients. And that's hard to do um, if unless you have the right tools to be able to handle it. So that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, 
I love it. I love it. And for those of you who are, I know a decent amount of my audience are entrepreneurs. I see some of you here on, uh, on the show too. So we've got such a good mix of AEs, entrepreneurs, sales leaders. So it's like, we, we all feel it in different ways, right? But just seeing all those yeses in the chat is huge. So, so why don't we do this? Why don't we start talking about, I'm going to start with some mindset. Yeah, Ian, let's, and let's we'll start get into with mindset, for sure. Okay, awesome, awesome. So why don't you kick us off? We can kind of go back and forth here. And um, if you have a question or if you want to receive coaching around something, just can, Catherine, can they raise their hands? I think they can raise their hands. Yeah, if, if people have questions while we're talking, let's keep it interactive. This is going to be, we, at least and I thought it'd be helpful to do like a live coaching session. So if you want to bring us your challenges or your uncertainties or any anything that maybe is going on, feel free and I'll, I'll you know, share how I would, coach anyone, right? And same with the lease. So feel free to jump in as we as we're talking. We want to keep this informal and interactive. So let's just go through and kind of popcorn back and forth the lease. Okay. Top yeah. mindset tip. So my number one mindset tip would be focus on what you can control. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can't control layoffs. You can't control economic um stock prices dropping. You can't control your company and what they're what they're communicating. What you can control is how you show up every day. What you can control is how you treat other people. What you can control is how hard you work and what you're working on. So if you focus on the process of just showing up and doing the right things every day and not letting all the outside noise affect what you actually do, I think that is a key to riding the storms because there will be storms. And if you're consistently riding, whether it's a, a, a dark storm or whether it's a sunny day, you know, that that's going to lead to consistent results in good times and in bad times. But where people tend to get tripped up is, is when they let the things outside of their control impact how they work, how they think, and then they actually stop doing the things that are going to make them successful in the first place. So that would be my number one tip would be focus on what you can control. Gosh, I love that so much. And I'll just, I'll share one thing related to that. This is something I get to remind myself of all the time too. Like your current results, it's a reflection of the past, right? So it's a reflection of who you were being in the past, what you were thinking, what you were doing, what your actions were, what your emotional state. And we get tripped up when we get so focused on what's currently going on in our lives. And so just knowing like who you're being, so what you're thinking, what you're feeling and what you're doing today is going to create a different result for you tomorrow. But if we get so fixated on this deal didn't close or my bank account's not where I'd like it to be, like we can really get in our heads and then we just keep perpetuating more of the same. So just really remembering how that works. And I think that ties in with, for me, I'd say one of my favorite mindset pieces is just that mindset of abundance, right? Which somebody had shared in the chat that it was, um, that it was your goal for this year. And Ian, I'll share a couple of thoughts then I want to kick it to you for kind of how you think about this, but I mean, we're all in sales or entrepreneurs for those of you who are entrepreneurs partially because we want to create abundance, right? We like, probably we like helping people. We like serving and we want to create abundance in our lives and you can't create abundance from lack thinking. You just can't, it's not how it works. So I think really shifting, I want to kind of tie in Ian to what you shared, thinking about with what you can control, mm -hmm. how can you add more abundance into that? Whether it's gratitude for your current customers, whether it's um, creating an abundance of opportunities for yourself, whether it's like blessing what you do have, right? And then letting that grow because what we focus on expands. So that for me, as part of my daily practice, we'll get into habits a little bit more as we go. We'll talk about morning routine, but really just focusing on no matter what is going on in the external world, like where am I feeling abundant yeah. right now? And where yeah, can I, I express gratitude for that? Yeah. Jump in Ian. Yeah. I, I have a lot of thoughts on this, but like, I think it, it starts with knowing what is an abundant mindset to begin mm -hmm. with. So people yeah. say, well, what is, what is abundant? What, what is abundance? And mm -hmm. the way I look at abundance, an abundant mindset specifically is it's a mindset of, of really focusing on serving other people. That that's the simplest definition. You see, when we get in our heads and we want to just serve ourselves and we put our own selfish needs ahead of those of others, generally we fall pretty hard. And I, I 
am living, walking proof of that and, and did everything the wrong way for, for a very long time until I nearly lost everything. But when I shifted my mindset to serving other people and really how can I actually help other people um, and how can I actually try to do good, you know, in, in terms of, I'll share a few examples of what this looks like, but when I'm with clients in abundant mindset, when I'm selling is let's see if I can help them first. Let's have a conversation. And if I am a fit, I'm going to share how I can help them. And if I'm not, I'm going to direct them to the right place. I'm not attached to the outcome of getting a sale. I'm attached to seeing whether or not I can help someone in this conversation. And if I can, then it's my obligation to share how, right? So that's a very abundant mindset going into a sales call without the expectation of I need to close because I don't need to close. I don't care about closing. What I care about is helping my clients. And if I can, then closing is a natural outcome of that. So that's an example of abundant mindset with, with clients. An example of an abundant mindset with um, family is when I'm with my wife, I'm going to be present. I'm going to put down my phone and I'm going to listen. And maybe her problems or her complaints are not something I necessarily am thinking about, but those are important to her. And therefore I'm going to listen and just be present and acknowledge it versus being dismissive and saying, what are you worrying about something? This doesn't matter, right? So again, you can take an abundant mindset anywhere, but in my mind, it really does come, come down to the shift from being inward focused on my needs first to outward focused on how can I serve the needs of other people? When you do that, generally your needs get served in an even bigger way than if you're focusing on only serving your own needs. So I'll, I'll stop there. That's how I look at abundant yeah. mindset. I love that so much. I love that so much. Um, I want to look at, we had a couple questions coming in the chat that could be good to call people up for some coaching. Sure. Uh, Ryan Johnson asked, how do you know the right things to work on? <laughs> Ryan, do you want to come off mute? I don't know where you are, but do you want to come? Yeah. yeah, there you go. Awesome. Hey, Ryan. Hey. All right. Hey, so your question was, how do you know the right things to work on? Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I'm uh, I work in the telecom industry, and there's um, if anybody's ever worked in kind of a software um, as a solution kind of sale thing, you have to go through. I have to go through so many different things to get the sale to go to complete. It's a pretty complex selling process, and so I find myself every day where it's like, well, I have this deal I'm working on, I have this deal I'm working on, so I need to process it through this way. I have I need to set time out. Oh, um, I need to set time aside for prospecting, but I have to drive two. I have to drive two hours to go to my area to prospect. So it's like I just find myself always bouncing around, and I and at the end of the week when I look at my week, I'm like, I don't feel like I got anything done because I'm just yeah. jumping all over the place. Mm. You mind if I take this one, Elise? No, yep, I was just gonna say, Ian, take it and roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Ryan, I, there's really in sales, there's two things that two buckets of activities that you should be working on that are the right things to work on, okay? The first bucket is anything to advance pipeline. And that comes first, okay? That comes before prospecting. You see, if you have a deal and you have to do a lot of steps to advance it, if you don't do those steps in favor of maybe trying new clients or cold calling, that deal is gonna slip through, right? The intention yeah. of the client to move forward is going to, waver and diminish with time. So you have to prioritize any deals where you've already met with the clients. You've had your first meeting. Maybe the next step is a demo. Maybe it's a business case. Maybe it's, you know, getting your executives with their executives. It's going to be different for every client, depending on what you sell and, and how long your sales cycle is. But I always look at my pipeline and I say, what are the next steps in this um, in this deal. And that comes first. That is the number one priority. And that happens in the first part of my day. So that's advancing pipeline bucket. And that's any next step on any active deal in your pipeline. That's a real opportunity. The second okay. bucket is creation of pipeline. So if you're spending all day, every day, advancing pipeline, your pipeline's full. That's a good thing. You don't need to prospect. <laughs> in fact, in Salesforce, I usually prospect in my, I had an enterprise account. So a lot of those deals were you know, six to nine months, 12 months, sometimes multiple years to sell. And I only had a handful of accounts. So I didn't always see the money right away, but I had to trust the process and the execution. Sometimes these were 20, 30, 40 meetings before a, uh, an actual sale would occur if it was a seven or eight figure deal. So mm -hmm. I, I had to have this faith of like, 
what's the right thing to be doing to advance the deal. So it's really important to have a mutual plan that you're working towards to have a project plan. You're almost a project manager at that point and yeah. executing and planning those next steps. So if your pipeline's full, that's your first priority. If your pipeline's not full and if you've exhausted every next step in your active deal, that means it's time to prospect. And then it's a matter of the second bucket, which is creation pipeline. And that creation of pipeline entails a lot of activities. It's not just prospecting. It's the research on how do you personalize and create a relevant message for your clients. It's the actual sending of emails. It's the actual copywriting to send out. It's video potentially on LinkedIn. It's you know, prospecting, picking up the phone. It's, you know, looking at the people and maybe watching their web webinar or something about them where you can use to gain insights on what you're going to use in your messaging. So there is really unlimited amount of um, activities you can do that falls under that prospecting bucket. But the way I always pro order it is advancement comes first because I don't want deals that are, you know, already in pipeline to slip through the cracks. And once I'm done advancing, I move to creation and everything else is noise. Everything else okay. that's busy work or unrelated to advancing and creation, generally I try to say no to or delegate. That, that's kind of how I structure my my habits, my my day, so that I know I'm working on the right things. And then just having blind faith that it's going to work out and trusting the process rather yeah. than being impatient. Patience is a huge part of this too. Yeah, and 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 I guess that's 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 the hardest part is that having that blind faith that like okay, I'm. I'm going through these steps and I'm hoping that this, these steps actually turn out. And I guess that's just part of being in sales, right? So it is. And especially if you have a long sales cycle where your deals take a lot longer and there's a lot of steps involved, you almost really need to just for enterprise. I see this all the time because it might take eight months and you might have seven zeros up to that deal. And then all of a sudden it's, it's seven figures. And then you made your number for the year. So that that's the yeah. nature of a more strategic selling cycle versus a more transactional where you have kind of a lot of sales going on and a lot of um, velocity, I would say. So it just depends on what you sell and how long it takes. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome question. Yeah. So advancing then creation was the, yeah. the bottom line takeaway there. And I think incorporating, you can incorporate the abundance mindset piece into that too, right? It's like when you're doing the activities, right? And having that abundance mindset, how can I have abundance and service mindset while I reach out, while I do each step of the process, um, just to help stay in that energy of faith. So we had, um, Mike said, I'd like to work more on a mindset of gratitude. Mike, did you want, you want some coaching around that? I mean, I think that's something we can, uh, probably a lot of people can relate to. I don't see where you are, Mike, but feel free to come off mute uh, if you wanted some support around that. Let's see here. Well, while you, so Mike, feel free to, uh, you know, feel free to come off mute. I saw Amanda too said, I like the idea of an abundant mindset. How do you train yourself to think bigger? Which I really love. I love. You want to take some of the, you can Let's take, take some of that. Can yeah, I want to. That's right up your alley. Yeah. Yeah. Amanda, are you, Amanda, do you want to come off mute? There we go. Hey. Hi. How are you guys? Hey. Amazing. Good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for doing this today. I appreciate it. All of this is obviously stuff we think about every day within our sales careers. I am an IT consultant. So I work with a lot of uh, IT leaders and their leadership teams. Mm -hmm. And you know, you get the you get the little deals. You're working with your management um, to grow the business, and especially now when they're saying, "Hey, what are you going to do next year? Give us an idea." Um, and you don't want to come in too small of growth, but you know that these deals take, you know, eight to ten months sometimes to get off the ground. How do you typically approach that as far as like? Again, you know, thinking big, like, you know, I'm going to hit my number and then some mm -hmm. and not, not getting, you know, stuck in the trenches mm -hmm. of your mind. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll share what worked for me and then, you know, I'll kick it over to you to add in anything there. But for me, it's all about like, what type of thinkers are you surrounding yourself with? So you'll always be, and people know this, right. But it's like, are we actively doing this? You're always going to think like the average of the five people who you're around the most. So for me, I was stuck at the six figure level for about 10 years. And it wasn't until, and I'll share numbers for context here, just to kind of understand the value of this. Um, and I wanted more for my life. You know, I wanted, I wanted a bigger life. I wanted to be able to give more, contribute more, et cetera. 
So I knew there was something in my thinking that was keeping me stuck because I was doing all the right things, but staying stuck, creating the same results every year. And I finally, I hired a mentor who was a multimillionaire, who was also a mom who was like, I, I wanted to know how she thought, like that was really it. I wanted to know how she thought. And as I started to see thought patterns in her of just one was like unavailability for any sort of lack in her life and just being completely unapologetic about it, right? Like I'm worth it. I own it. And like her energy was just a different level of energy. And I wanted to start thinking like, how does she think? I joined a mastermind of other women who were going for seven figures. And it was with that, like my results transformed and I 10 X my income in six weeks. And so it's, it was who I was around because I knew that if I wanted to think bigger, I had to be around people who were going to challenge my thinking and keep telling me you're thinking too small. You're thinking too small. And most people won't tell you that right for all of you. Like you're, you're high achievers. If you're here, like the fact that you're here, you're motivated, you're a high achiever. Um, even if you're earlier in a role and you haven't seen those results yet, I just know by the fact that you're here, you are a high achiever. Probably a lot of the people around you are not going to be like a next, they're not going to have next level thinking for you, right? They might look to you and say like, oh, he's got huge results or she's got huge results. You need to get in the room with people who are thinking way bigger than you that make you feel like not in a bad way, but help you see how small the thinking has been up until this point. So that's what, that's what I would say, Ian, what would you, what would you say to that? I, I would echo that. I, I just got off a call with Isaac, who's on the call right now. <laughs> He's like, I have this great opportunity. I have this great job. And I said, well, it's not that great. <laughs> and, and, and it's not because it's not great. It's because I see hundreds of different, you know, opportunities. And it, it's about getting perspective outside of your circle. I, I, I would ag agree with that a hundred percent. And so just having exposure to me, Isaac gets a different lens of the opportunity and where, you know, where, where he could be, you know, focusing and, and, and how he should be thinking about that. So I think, I think that's one. The only thing I would add is I, uh, I, I think that thinking bigger, if you're thinking bigger for yourself, that's great. But if you're thinking bigger for your client, then that's a, 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 a like you're a, you're a vessel for them. So if you're if you're trying to sell a a big deal, and your client's only thinking about it small, and that small project is not going to have an impact, a material impact on their business. It's not going to have a material impact on their their financial goals or their company goals. You're doing them a disservice. So if you know in the right thing that they need a full overhaul of their IT infrastructure and that that's the way they're going to move faster, innovate quicker, Amanda, in their business. It's your obligation to tell them that. So it's like, begin with the end in mind. Say, look, we can start here, but what you really need is this. Let me show you a roadmap on how you can get there. Let's work on a phased approach, but we're working towards a full overhaul. So that's what clients want. They want someone who can challenge them to think bigger and do things differently, especially if they're struggling and especially if they're not achieving their goals, you know, having someone to tell you, Hey, you're doing it all wrong without necessarily calling their baby ugly. Right. That that's a, that's, that's a skill in sales that I think will serve you very well when you can go and say, Hey, you need to be thinking about this a little differently. You're thinking here, but really you need to look at the big picture. So how do you become a trusted advisor? Well, you need to know, about what's happening in the industry. You need to know about how companies are innovating faster by overhauling their IT organization. You need to know specifically what people in their roles are facing. So I always like to look at industry research. I always like to you know, stay equipped with trends. One of the reasons why I'm we're doing this is because mindset and habits are one of the biggest areas that sales reps are struggling with now. So it's like, we're, you have to have a pulse to be able to say with confidence and certainty, you're thinking about this maybe a little bit smaller than what you could. Here's what I see for you. And then they can say, well, that's great, but we're right here right now. Okay, well, great. We'll start here, but we need to still be looking outward at this bigger vision. And here's why that's important. And I want to make sure we're working towards that. Are you aligned? Because if you're not, maybe we're not the right partner. Maybe you know, you, you're better off just hiring a company that can just do this one job for us versus partnering with us. So that's kind of the way I would... Think about it as like think bigger in service of your clients versus just in service of like getting a bigger deal done for yourself. 
right? Because if you have a bigger vision that you're helping a client execute, it's going to mean bigger deals, bigger commissions. That's just a, a natural outcome. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. And I, and I think it applies the reverse engineering how you want your life to look too. 100%. So thank you. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. And Ian, what you were talking about reminded me of, for any of you who've read uh, Science of Getting Rich, this concept of the impression of increase, right? Which is that all of us, just our nature is, we want to expand, we want increase. So Ian, to what you said of helping your clients see the potential for increase in their life, right? And in their business and in what you're selling, like that's huge. That's going to get people excited. That's going to get them to, for the right ones, right? To want to say yes and move forward. So um, amazing. We had, uh, we had another question. I'm kind of, you know, you, I, I just want to like go through questions right now. If you're that's good fun. with that, yeah, I feel like can, this is a we good, can do that for sure. <laughs> well, we'll, we will fit in our points as we go. I want to get habits too, though. We're about halfway yeah, yeah, yeah. through and I want to talk about like okay. sort of daily, awesome. daily habits. If, if we let's have. talk about this, let's do one more. Are you cool? If we do one more question on belief, then we can talk about habits. Sure. Yep. We had, I think this was good. I think this was a good one. So, um, Damien, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but you said thoughts on belief and attainability. I was given a new, really aggressive mm -hmm. number and having some major doubts, which how many can relate to having doubts around your goal. Right. So I think that would be really good to speak to. Um, you want to, first of all, how do you pronounce your name? I feel yeah, like I should. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you got it right. Kudos. Oh, great. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so I work in the cybersecurity space. Um, I almost look at it as like a managed cybersecurity provider, right? Companies bring us on so they don't have to build out their own infosec team. And yeah, my new goals are just way larger than last year, you know, because we take a land and expand approach, right? So some expansion, but just the amount of net new logos I'm going to need to bring in in the next year. And uh, I'm having to do a presentation next week to my board on how I'm going to hit this number. And it's like kind of one of those things like, here's your number, go figure it out and tell us how you're going to do it. And I'm like, I have no freaking clue how I'm going to do it. So it's, it's going to be a Try, why I thought this was so relevant was like, well, I've got to figure out how I'm going to do this and really believe it because otherwise, like, this meeting's going to go awful next week. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ian, you want to start? Um, I like Napoleon Hill's book, uh, Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. And he says, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. So, if you don't believe it, it ain't going to happen because <laughs> your actions in your you know, your plan is not going to support it. But I, I would say in, in general, um, there's the, there's the emotional side of belief and then there's the planning and the logical side and they're different, different parts. So for, for the emotional side, um, you know, it, it, it's interesting the, the, there's a guy I, I, I listen to, he has a podcast. Uh, it's great. His name's Ed Milet. And he talks about this concept of, a internal thermostat. So if you think of your uh, opportunity, everyone's got an internal thermostat. So Elisa's was around six figures, right? And it's like, I'm a six figure earner. This is where I'm comfortable. This is what I'm meant to do. And then once she surrounded herself by people that were doing seven figures and you know much more successful people, that brought in. So the two ways to expand your belief and to actually run Think of the think of your thermostat as your operating temperature, the rhythm with which you run. And maybe you're running as a 200K a year earner. And that's what you do. And that's kind of where you're comfortable. Well, if you get really hot, sometimes you self-sabotage and go down. And if you go really slow, then you pull yourself up, right? So we're always comfortable. Well, if you want to raise that internal thermostat, the, the key is to, again, it goes down to um, surrounding yourself by people that are doing large deals in that space of so cybersecurity. So if there are there companies doing four or five, six million, if your target went from a million to, to 2 million, you're maybe like, oh my gosh, that's impossible. It's doubled. But I, I know people in cybersecurity that have a 4 million target that are hitting it, right? So it's like finding those experts in, in that industry that are capable either within your company or outside of your company and learning what they do and how they do it and, and connecting with them, I think is it, it strengthens belief. It strengthens belief when you have people that have walked before you that you can model in their footsteps for. So I think that's one part of it. And the second part of it then is, is, is really getting a plan, working backwards, right? So I, I didn't believe it was possible 
for me to run a marathon. And I certainly didn't believe it was possible for me to do it in the time I did it. But then I found a mentor who, um, you know, did marathon training and he gave me a plan. And sure enough, I just followed the plan and, and I, and I hit my goal. So I think that is a big part of it is like, you need to have some guidance. It's not just go figure it out. It's like, okay, well, work with your boss, work with other people to get the right plan and then back into it. Um, I'm going to give you a video I just made. I think it was released today on my YouTube on how to strengthen your belief, but I have a five-step process for that, right? And it's it's really, again, it's about finding a mentor, right? It's about visualizing and, and feeling into the success before it even happens. It's about um, you know, getting the right plan. And, and then it comes down to, again, trusting the process and, and, and not getting attached to the outcome, but knowing, you know, that your plan is right. And once you do those things, you're going to feel more confident. So I'll, I'll drop that in the chat for you, um, Damien. So then you can kind of see it, but you got to, you got to have more than just figure it out. You got to have like a, a roadmap and ideally a model who is doing some big numbers in your space that you can learn from and, and model after. No, this is super helpful. Appreciate it. Anything to add, Elise, on that? Yeah, you know, I think, um, gosh, you know, it's it's so good. Like, it's all perspective, right? So kind of like to Ian's point of get a mentor, get get around people who have done that. Like, it may feel big to you, Damien, but would it be big to everyone, right? Like, would it feel, and you could just use people who you know or who you don't know, like, would it feel like a big number to Ian? I don't know. Would it feel like a big number to Elise? I don't know, right? But like, it's all context, right? It's all perspective. And I would say two other two other things. So one is you got this number for a reason, right? And anytime I, something happens in my life that feels challenging or feels like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I go through an exercise an old mentor of mine would have me do, which is I'm thrilled this is happening because it doesn't matter what it is. It's like something could go sideways. A deal could go wrong. I get a big challenge. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm thrilled this is happening because, and I force myself to list out 10 different reasons why I'm thrilled. And I think I would really look at for you, like, who do I get to become in the process? Right. So like, first of all, like I got this because the only reason I could get this is if it's possible for me. And then who am I going to get to become in the process. And also really, I, I don't want to spend too much time on the stakes. I know we want to get to habits, but the way the mind body connection works is when we have a negative. So our thoughts trigger our feelings. So when we have a negative feeling in our body, a feeling of doubt, a feeling of insecurity, it's actually your body's feedback mechanism that you're thinking something in that moment. That's not true for you. So when you have a feeling of doubt, I would really examine the thought of what did I just think? Did I just think I can't do this? My body's literally telling me right now, that's not true. It's like, Oh, it's just thinking a lie. Right. So again, we could do like a deep dive on, um, on neuro programming and everything here, which we're, we're, we don't have time for, but just knowing that feedback loop, I think is so important. And just because you think a thought doesn't mean it's actually true. Right. So, um, yeah, a little bit to add on there. So, um, awesome. Awesome. Hold on Ian. You're there we go. Sorry, but I, I just dropped the five steps there for you in the chat too. Oh, so you can have that in the video. Okay. Amazing. Literally just published this today. So it's a great question. That is you want to, you want to transition to some habits? Let's talk about, let's talk about habits. Cause we started talking about it at the beginning and you were telling me about your most perfect morning routine today, which I was like, I like all of it except for one part. So <laughs> let's so, talk habits. Let's get into it. I like it. So here, here's the thing about habits. Okay. Habits change your mindset. When you, when you're doing things that are healthy, that are positive, that are productive, you feel better. And you, and you think in a, in a better way. So people will say, well, what comes first mindset or habits? It's like the chicken or the egg, right? There's no right answer because you have to, you have to think differently to change how you, how you work and how you operate. But in my experience, just doing things differently actually makes you think differently. So the, the two are interlinked tremendously. And for me, um, my number one recommended habit and it's not one habit it's a series of habits but having a morning routine and starting the morning off with um winning is what will set you up and set up the rest of the day for success and so i'm i'm not going to recommend doing my morning routine because it is you know a, a result of 6 years of personal development 
Um, Elise and I are both very into personal development. And, and, and I think it would be a lot for people to take on, but I can share what I did this morning. And people ask me, Ian, how's your energy so high all the time? How are you consistently so you know, positive or in a good mood? And I'm like, well, it's because I set myself up through what I'm doing before I see you. So in the morning, typically, um, I'll just share this morning. So I, I woke up around seven, not like crazy early, not like five or 4 a.m. like some of these people. But for me, it was seven o'clock and I went and I, I had an energy shake, right? With, with vitamins and greens and, you know, super, you know, it charged me physically. Um, then I went on a three mile run, nothing, nothing crazy, but nice 30 minute run, hopped in a cold shower, which woke my butt up <laughs> and also got a lot of the, the blood circulating and, and was really good for my cells and my skin. Um, by now I'm feeling pretty good. Okay. I got the shower, the energy shake. Well, th so that's like the physical part of the morning routine is doing something physical that is going to make you feel good. And then the mental part began. So after that, I went and I did a daily affirmation. Now for people that have struggle with mindset, and I do too, all the time. Again, I, I, I come from a family of addict addicts and I struggle with addiction myself. So I have to constantly, you know, put myself into the abundant mindset. And the way I do that is through affirmations. And so I created an affirmation that I can share with everyone because it's, it's really um, new for me. I, I do affirmations all the time, but I just updated mine. That's more around spirituality. So I, I, affirmation is something you say to yourself every morning that reminds you of how you want to show up in your best light, right? And, and it comes down to being in service of other people. So I am kind, loving, and humble in spirit. This is how I want to show up. My second is I'm hardworking, focused, and disciplined in action, right? How do I work? My habits, my interactions. I respect, listen, and stay present with others, okay? I know that's a challenge for me being ADHD, so really being focused and being attentive. I lead by example. Do, do what I say I'm going to do. I inspire others to be their best, and I put God's will before my own, which came from my addiction recovery. And so I know if I'm focused on my selfish desires, I tend to behave badly and, and don't feel good. But when I'm focusing on serving other people and, and being an example and, you know, and, and putting God first, that, that helps me um, truly not only feel great, but serve others at a higher capacity. And then I have a picture of my family, which reminds me of why I'm doing what I'm doing. So that is something I read. It's pinned to my um, mirror in my bathroom. I read it out loud. And, and on days when maybe I'm not feeling so hot, at least I know how I want to show up. And that programs my brain to show up that way. If you see it every day, you're going to do it. So I highly recommend affirmations. Then I, I say a prayer and I did a, uh, it was a 10 minute meditation. And then I started my day. So imagine how great you feel after exercising, after saying an affirmation, after connecting spiritually and, and after meditating, right? So these are things that, do I do it perfect every day? No, but I try to get an exercise or meditation in, which gets me grounded and, and starting the day right. So that's, that extends then to how I interact with other people and, you know, how I can show up um, in service of other people. So that that's the, the morning routine. And for anyone who wants to kind of incorporate all of those elements, there's a great book called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. And he talks about that. Doesn't need to look exactly like mine. You got to do what works for you. But I find that's like one of the biggest hacks that you can make to getting your mind and your habits right is, is to start the day with a very healthy morning routine. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and I mean, if it's, I can share, I can share my, like mine is so it's funny cause it's similar, but it's different. And I oh, think yeah, I'll share yours. I'd love the, to hear it at least. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that's just like the takeaway from this is you get to pick what works for you. And I think it's different for different life phases that we're in too. So I'm like, I am a super early riser. Mine starts at three, but I also go to bed at eight. I'm like a grandma. So that's, <laughs> it's just, I get my sleep, <laughs> but it's just different. I do everything Ian does except for the cold shower. <laughs> um, I just start mine different. I start with the, um, with more of the mindset piece. So I list, I actually have my affirmations recorded and it's like a vivid description of how I want my life to be like whatever the next kind of goal is in my life that I'm working on. And it's about a five minute recording. I listen to it first thing when I wake up, because when you wake up, your subconscious is more open. So it's a lot easier to program yourself. So that's the first thing I do. I get, I do a longer meditation. I do like 45 minutes to an hour, kind of depending on the day. Um, but I'll do that. I'll study. And then 
the physical part of mine is not as rigorous as Ian. So I'll like, I'll hop on the treadmill and kind of and answer DMs or answer emails while I'm going. But I always make sure before I get in my inbox, before I get in reactive mode, I've got that time for me to get really grounded and, and like anchored in for spiritual connection with who I want to be, with how I want to show up. Um, and so I think it's like, you get to kind of pick what works for you, but you'll hear commonalities and elements in both of those of, of what really matters you know, so, um, and you feel good. I mean, how do you not feel good starting the day that way? And that's really what it's about. When you feel good, you can show up your best and you can serve others at at a high level. So it starts with yourself. You can't pour from an empty cup. You can't serve others if you're depleted. And so taking care of your mind, your body, your connection, your relationship. I know I have two kids, at least, you know, has a family, right? It's like, how do you balance it all? Well, you, you have to make time. You have to prioritize your health and you have to prioritize your connections and relationships. And that enables you to then, um, I think, just operate at a much higher capacity and cope with stress in a much healthier way. 100%, 100%. I want to, um, there's a quick question on meditation. Michael, I do um, Joe Dispenza's, which is why they're so long. Um, Ian, what type of meditation do you do? I have the waking up app. So I, I, um, it's usually 10 to 15 minutes per meditation. It's kind of a more intellectual approach to meditation versus a embody. It's like explaining what's going on and why, and it's for people that are skeptics about it, which, which I was, um, you know, to, for me, honestly, it just helps me focus. It helps with ADHD for sure. Awesome. Awesome. We got some JD fans in the house. I love it. Um, Ian, what do you, here's my thought. Tell me if this works for you. I'd love to spend like one to two minutes on end of day acknowledgement. And then I think everyone's going to want to hear your daily planning process. Cool. Are you good? If we, if we roll with those, go for it. That cool. Okay. So I'll do super quick on end of day acknowledgement. And then I want you to take over with, with your planning process. I think for, for your mental health and for you to, continue to just stay motivated. Something that so many of us forget to do, but is so important is that acknowledgement of yourself at the end of the day, right? So you can hear what I love about Ian's heart. Like you can hear it on this webinar, right? It's so service-minded. And it's like, if I'm just showing up and serving people, like I'm winning, which is true. It's how it works. And on top of that, I think it's also so important to show up for yourself and acknowledge yourself for how you showed up during the day, regardless of whether or not you had a sale, regardless of whether or not you hit like a specific goal, because we can't control all of those factors, but acknowledging yourself for what am I proud of myself for? Mm -hmm. So this may sound corny, but I swear to you, it is one of, it's one of the biggest things that created an up level in my life. And I have my clients do it and they make a lot more money when they do it. So I'll just put it out there. So the end of the day, looking at yourself in the mirror, I know again, it sounds corny, just give it a try. And this is from, uh, Lisa Nichols. So this is not any Lisa Archer original. If any of you follow Lisa Nichols, she's a great motivational speaker. And you just speak to yourself and you say to yourself, like, I'm proud of you for, and you list out seven things. You can journalist, by the way, or you can just think it if it feels really corny to look at yourself in the mirror, but I'm proud of you for, right? And it's like, I'm proud of you for exercising today. I'm proud of you for um, getting up on time. I'm proud of you for, um, giving your best on that sales call, right? Like whatever it is, proud of myself for seven things. Then you forgive yourself for one thing. So for me, it would be like, at least I forgive you for, and then whatever. I fell into an old habit. I judged myself. I judged somebody else. And then the final is um, I commit to you that. So I'd say like, at least I commit to you that. And it's seven things. I commit to you that you're going to have a great night's sleep. I commit to you that you're going to achieve all your goals and more. I commit to you that everything you want wants you back. I commit to it. It's like, whatever it is that I need to speak over my life. Um, I say that, and it's that building of this, it will build yourself image tremendously and your income will always be, it, 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 it's based on your self image, right? So, um, do you, so do you the, say that out loud? Or do you write it and journal it when you do the, when you do those, those, so it depends if I'm just doing mirror work. I just, I don't say it out loud because usually my husband and my son are in the next room and I don't want them to like, look at me like a lunatic. So I like, I'll say it in my head or if I'm by myself, I'll journal it. Like if I'm, I'm journaling, I'll journal it. Gotcha. So, yeah. But it Love makes that. a huge difference in your self image. So I, I think it's how you go to bed too, you know, totally. given, you have all your falling asleep pretty 
early so you need to do this like at 5 p.m or something <laughs> no for, for... Oh, no you're not wrong 5 p.m i'm like i'm ready can we can we all talk in now <laughs> I, I think there's a there's an underlying theme here of just self-awareness yeah. you know knowing who you are and staying true to your values knowing who you are and living your values right if you don't take the time to even know who you are how are you going to write an affirmation how are you going to express gratitude how are you going to plan and, and dream big and like that's at the underlying like root of all of this is like who are you and what do you stand for and then once you know that are you going to live your values every day and and then having tools to say okay maybe I didn't live my values today maybe you know I didn't have a perfect day but that's okay right and I forgive myself and tomorrow's a new day and and, and we're all human we all struggle uh, at least and I I we have our struggles, <laughs> guarantee you. I, I do every day, right? But you have to choose consciously how you're going to show up and you have to, you know, make sure that's aligned with with your values. And so I think that, again, this, this comes down to this journey of self-awareness that we're all on. And once you know yourself, then you know what is in alignment and what's out of alignment. And if you're out of alignment, you, you need to pivot and course correct. And if you're in, in alignment, you can you can feel good at the end of the day and sleep well at night knowing you, you know, you did your best. So I love that practice, Elise. And I think it's nice to put it all together yeah. for sure. Awesome. Awesome. You want to take, uh, I want to make sure we have like two yeah, minutes. I'll, I'll take, plan, steps, I'll, you I'll take, take planning time. and then we can just kind of do Q and a for the last cool. like seven or eight minutes and just do some awesome. coaching with what people resonate. So, um, I, I will say, I've been thinking a lot about this and I just want to share it. So why are people unhappy? Why are people, you know, never content, never satisfied in, in sales and outside of sales too, right? Some of those stats that we talked about. And I think Elise hit on it, but it's focusing on what you're not doing mm -hmm. and looking at what's wrong versus appreciating what you are doing and, and, and acknowledging what, what's actually progress or, or right. So I think that that's really important. Like the source of misery comes from like comparing yourself to others or thinking about all the gaps of all the things that you didn't do. Because look, there's never enough things to get done in a day, right? There's just, we all have the same amount of time in the day. So I think that that's like giving yourself grace and realizing that there's no such thing as perfect is so essential to being happy and being fulfilled because it just doesn't exist. Perfect doesn't exist, right? There's no such thing as a perfect day. You're always, even if you have the perfect day, you might snap at your kids because they're impatient and you might have values and I don't snap, I, I don't yell, but maybe you slip. And that's because we're human and, the, and we're all, we're all going to make mistakes. But if you can make those mistakes a little bit less frequently every day, or maybe a little bit less time, you are going to be better each year. Right. And so that's, that's kind of the, the grace, the concept of grace and giving yourself grace is, is what Elise is talking about with the, I forgive myself for, and I, I just love that. And I think it's really important. Right. Um, so to, to feel better at the end of the day, typically if you're in sales or you're an entrepreneur, the, the way you're going to feel better at the end of the day is if you have a productive day. Okay, if you get things done that you want to and you aim to accomplish. And so for me, I'm just going to share the 10,000 foot view of how I get more done in a week than most people do in a month. And I can say that very, very confidently. Okay. Um, for context, I have a family of four people. <laughs> I have two little, little boys, two and six years old. My wife is a full time mom and she wants me present and around. Um, I take four vacations a year and probably another four or five weekend getaways. Um, I run a seven figure coaching business. I also am active in the recovery community. I post every day on LinkedIn. So I'm doing a lot and, and, and I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying it. And I ran a marathon. I'm saying that because it is possible to hit the goals in your personal life in your family life and in your business life. If you manage your time efficiently, and that's what it comes down to, okay? So what I do, I have two techniques I use to manage my time efficiently. The first is a, um, I can send this to everyone who registered as a follow-up um, if we have the registration link, link, but I use a system called the 12 week year. And this is a really, really simple um, 
system that I do once a week on a Monday morning, usually, and I'll write down here are the critical things that I want to get done this week, okay? And then what happens with the 12-week year is I'm going to share my screen because I think it's easier than seeing my little, my little paper here, um, is at the end of the week um, or at the beginning of the week, I will prioritize this. And I, I print it out. I print it out. I do it every week. So it's, it's called a weekly scorecard. And I write, here are the key actions. And I brain dump all the things that I want to get done. And then I rank them in priority. So from one to... 15 or however many are on the list. And then that's my start of the week. So the reason why is this eliminates what's called decision fatigue and decision fatigue is like, oh my gosh, I have so much to, to do. Where do I start? Well, if you just take the time to prioritize and rank it, you can see I've done one, I've done two, I've done three and we're on a Tuesday already. So I got seven critical things done that I need to do yesterday. Okay. So that's the first part of it. The second part of it is the daily planning. So once you do the weekly planning using the scorecard, then you could pivot to the daily planning, which is at the beginning of the day, I usually take about 10 minutes and I fill in the white space of my calendar. And all I do is I go in the order of importance. And again, the things that are the most important are the RGAs, advancing deals or things in my case related to my upcoming launch for my new program. So I'll go in and I will look at the calendar and I will fill in the white space. So my calendar has things on here that are both meetings and tasks. So yesterday I fixed something in my portal. It's done, right? I finished this download. It's done. I created the workbook. It's done, right? So again, I have this listed out and it's a direct feed from the weekly scorecard. So white space is dead space. White space is where we Foot, take our foot off the gas, where we slack off, where we go to distractions or habits. You don't see YouTube or Instagram or a bunch of personal stuff in here. It's, it's, I'm working on the things that actually move the needle in my business. So in my experience, you can go back to my calendar and look at every week for years and years, and it'll always look the same, right? So it'll be a mix of meetings and tasks that are high priority. And I do that every day. And the beautiful thing about the system is I already know at the beginning of the day what I'm doing because I'm just going off of this 12 week year and the most important things get done first. And so that, that to me, that it's, it's, it's like a to-do list on steroids because there's a prioritization component here. And that just is what I use to, to do my planning every day. Amazing. That's so awesome. I think, uh, yeah. So you'll send that out. We'll, we'll get you the list of everyone registered. You'll send that out. Yep. So I'll send okay. the template for the weekly scorecard. I recommend printing it. So it's right in front of you. If you look at my desk, you can't see it, but there's only two pieces of paper, right? There's the marathon training plan, the running plan, and there's this plan and that's it. You don't need clutter. You sim less is more fewer things that are the right things executed is, is how you get to seven figures in sales and entrepreneurship. It's about working on less things, but working on the right things. It is 100% the truth. That is 100% the truth. And I used to believe the opposite. I was like, it's just more and more and more, like more busyness, more things. It's if you talk to any successful entrepreneur, sales professional at the million dollar plus level, it's less, but better. It is 100% true. Um, we, so we've got a couple quick questions. Uh, I want to give a moment just Ian for you to tell people where they can connect with you further. I'll share on my end and then we can maybe do a- Yeah, so two, play, two places- for for me, number one is LinkedIn. Connect with me there. You probably already are. That's why you're here. But if you're not, send me a connection request and um, I'll, I'll give you some resources to help you with free video trainings. I'll get you my YouTube and my newsletter. The other thing is if you do want coaching or you want to enroll in my program, my enrollment opens in January and the website is untapyoursalespotential.com. So I will be taking my next cohort of students and feel free to jump on that. There is a wait list. Just make sure you're on the wait list. You'll see a big button to get on there because I'm selling to the wait list. I'm launching to the wait list. So you've got to be on there. Amazing. And people have tremendous quantum leaps in that program. So highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, and then for further connection with me, LinkedIn is also a great place. So send me a connection request there if we're not connected yet. Um, we've got a bunch of free resources in our community. I've got a daily podcast called She Sells Radio. So you can join that, subscribe to that on your favorite podcast player. 
And we're actually hosting a retreat coming up in January, the 17th through the 19th in Sedona. So if you want more details on that, you can go to elisearcher.com slash Sedona or send me a DM. I'll be happy to send you more details as well. Um, and I know it's top of the hour. I know there were more questions. These were such good questions, but I know Ian, I think you got to go. I got a meeting as well. Um, thank you, everyone. Thanks everyone. Bye. Good luck yeah. and stay positive and uh, finish, finish the year strong. Happy holidays and wishing the best for 2023. Okay. Take care right. everyone. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.